Hi students, welcome to my channel Economic Lectures. In this video, we'll be discussing one of the important topic from public finance and the topic is Wagner's law of increasing state activities or what we call as Wagner's hypothesis. In the previous video, we had discussed uh, another topic, uh, another one topic from public finance and it was the maximum social advantage theory put forward by A.C. Pigou and Dalton. So let's look what's Wagner's hypothesis. Wagner, Adolf Wagner is a German economist. What he put forward is that there is a functional cause and effect relationship between the growth of an economy and the relative growth of the public sector. So what he has said is that there is a functional cause and effect relationship. So what does cause and effect relationship mean? A factor or a thing that causes or that affects the change in another thing. That's why that's how we can explain the cause and effect relationship. So Yandana Adolf Wagner will not work another. Addeham para another economy the growth, other open than a public sector and the growth. Uh ear and the growth girl kumidail or cause and effect relationship. So, what Adolf Wagner is saying that the economy, the growth of an economy is the result or it results in the growth of the public sector or it causes in the growth of the public sector. So, the public sector in the sense that the uh, public expenditure, the increase in the public expenditure from the part of the government. So this is what uh, Adolf Wagner puts forward. So let's go deep into the topic. He says that relative growth of the government sector was an inherent characteristics of industrialization and uh, industrializing economies. So uh, what he says is that uh, when considering the industrialized economies or industrializing economies, that is growing economies, every time there is a growth in the uh, government sector or there is a growth in the public expenditure from the part of the government. Wagner's hypothesis holds that as per capita income and output increase. Uh, we uh, know that uh, the growth in per, per capita income denotes that there is a growth in the GDP. And the growth in the output also denotes that there is a growth in the GDP. Apo Wagner industrializing economy historically when it's taken that industrializing economies they will be having a relative growth of their government sector atterathirulla economicalde government sector endayirikkum eppolum oru relative growth undayirikkum so when such a growth is there that's why wagner put forward that as a per capita income and the capital output increase adayide in when we say in another sense the gdp grows in the industrial nation, the public sector of these nations necessarily grows as a proportion of total economic activity. Arajatu Matutu Nadakana economic activity would a karanamite, Adawa GDP growth in a garnamite, the public sector of these nations generally and necessarily grows. So when there is an economic growth in a nation, that was that economic growth results in the growth of the public sector of that nation. And when we denote public sector, when we uh, name public sector, uh, specifically it denotes that the public expenditure from the part of the government. And thus, when GDP grows, the public uh, uh, expenditure also grows. He has divided public expenditure into two parts. Uh, Wagner says that uh, mainly each and every nation, when they consider, when the government considers public expenditure, it has two parts. Rand Vibangal light and public expenditure. Podwe Uridajatin public expenditure and amuk divide chayan karimati. So what are they? The first one expenditure for internal and external security. This is true for today uh, in for today's nations too. That is most of the nations spend a huge part of their income for security. And then internal and external security for the war preparation, for buying ammunition. Uh, for buying other such materials for research and development. Even our nation, India too, spends a big amount of the uh, public expenditure for this purpose, for internal and external security. 
അഥവാ ഇൻറ്റേണൽ സെക്യൂരിറ്റി എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ പോലീസ് സംവിധാനങ്ങൾക്ക് വേണ്ടി എക്സ്റ്റേണൽ സെക്യൂരിറ്റി എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ ആർമി അതുപോലെയുള്ള പാരാമിലിറ്ററി ഫോഴ്സസിന് വേണ്ടിയുള്ള എക്സ്പെൻഡിച്ചർ ദ സെക്കൻഡ് വൺ കൾച്ചറൽ ആൻഡ് വെൽഫെയർ വിച്ച് ഇംപ്ലോയീസ് ഹെൽത്ത് ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ട് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ എക്സെട്രാ ദ സെക്കൻഡ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ എക്സ്പെൻഡിച്ചർ ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ഫോർ ഹെൽത്ത് ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ട് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ ആസ് വി ആൾ നോ ദാറ്റ് ഡീൽസ് വിത്ത് ദ പബ്ലിക് ദാറ്റ് ഡീൽസ് വിത്ത് ദ പീപ്പിൾ സിറ്റിസൻസ് ഡയറക്റ്റ് ജനങ്ങളുമായിട്ട് നേരിട്ട് ഇടപഴകുന്ന ഹെൽത്ത് ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ട് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ കാര്യങ്ങൾക്ക് വേണ്ടിയാണ് മറ്റൊരു വലിയ ശതമാനം എക്സ്പെൻഡിച്ചറും ഓരോ രാജ്യവും മാറ്റിവെക്കുന്നത് ദ എക്സ്പെൻഡിച്ചർ ഓഫ് ബോത്ത് ഓഫ് ദീസ് വുഡ് എൻഗേജ് വിത്ത് ടൈം സോ വാട്ട് അഡോപ്റ്റ് ബാഗിനെ പുട്ട് ഫോർവേഡ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ദ എക്സ്പെൻഡിച്ചർ ഫോർ ബോത്ത് ഓഫ് ദീസ് ഇൻക്രീസസ് വിത്ത് ടൈം ഹി ഹാസ് ഓൾസോ യൂസ് എ ഗ്രാഫിക്കൽ റെപ്രസെൻറ്റേഷൻ ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു പ്രൂവ് ഹിസ് തിയറി ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഹിസ് ഹൈപ്പോത്തസിസ് സൊ ലെറ്റ്സ് ഹാവ് എ ലുക്ക് ടു ദ ഗ്രാഫ് ആൻഡ് ടു ദ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് നിയർ ടു ദാറ്റ് Wagner's hypothesis with the help of a tag. So in the diagram we know that on the x axis we have denoted the per capita real income. So what is uh, what does it denotes uh, the per capita real income increases from 0 300 600 900 1200 uh, 1500 and so on. That is it denotes the growth of GDP. Uh, so per capita income is denoted on the x axis and on the y axis the real per capita output of public goods so what does it denotes real per capita output of public goods it denotes that the expenditure uh, the public expenditure from the part of the government so we have two lines uh, two curves the first one is a1 and the second one is a2 okay so what does a1 and what does a2 denotes the line a1 represents a situation in which the public sector maintains a constant proportion of the total economic production of society over time so what does the curve a1 or the line a1 denotes it denotes that there is a proportional growth uh, proportional growth in the gdp and also on the same hand the from the public expense a uh, public expenditure so there is a proportional growth the public sector maintains a constant proportion of the total economic production of the society over time so when there is a uh, certain amount of increase in gdp proportionally there is an increase in the public expenditure too so actually this is not uh, the uh, curve a1 or the line a1 is not uh, is not what uh, adolf wagner has said this line is used as a reference point he uses this line as a reference point and the low is shown on the next line that is the line a2 here the proportion of total resources devoted to the output of public good is expanding over time so what uh, wagner says is that when there is an increase in gdp there is a more than proportional increase in the public expenditure from the part of the government so when there is 100 crore increase in the gdp there is an income more than proportional increase from the part of the government when it comes to the public expenditure adava government oru oru rajyathu or economy il 100 kodi rupa gdp vardhikkeyanengil adinekkal adhigamayittu government ne baathunna public expenditure unda so the the relationship between Uh, economic growth and the um, public sector is not proportion and we can say that as wagner said is that there is a more than proportional increase in the public expenditure or the public sector when there is a growth in the government uh, economic growth so what are the factors responsible for this persistent increase in public expenditure so we are going into that according to wagner's hypothesis there are many factors which are responsible for persistent increase in public expenditure so what are those reasons the first one continuous expansion of social activity so when we are considering a nation there is no uh, you can never see a decrease in the amount of social activity the social activity of a nation increases uh, day by day or from each time Uh, the amount of schools the amount of hospitals the services provided each increases the next one war and preparation for the war each and every budget of our nation as uh, when we consider uh, we, uh, we, uh, it's easy to come to know that the uh, amount for defense increases from each and every budget 
the next one growth of population and urbanization uh, when there is uh, when there is an increase in the population and also there is an increase in urbanization there occurs more public expenditure the fourth reason world depression uh, so when there is depression of course the government will have to increase the public expenditure to increase the demand that's of course a Keynesian policy the fifth one rise in prices uh, the sixth one democratic institutions uh, when a nation becomes more democratic uh, of course we used to, uh, we require many institutions such as we have central government we have the state government then the local self-government so for each of these uh, the expenditure from the government budget has to be increased uh, similarly when there is a rise in price of course when uh, there is a rise in price government will have to give more subsidy uh, through the ration shops and through the supply co and other trivani shops so that's to uh, results in the increase in public expenditure another reason is the role of economic planning now each and every nation is transforming from absolute capitalism to uh, something that we call mixed economy so there requires economic planning and of course economic planning results in increased public expenditure from the power of government the next uh, reason modern complexities of life uh, the life is not as easy as before the life is more complex uh, the reason being that when you when the government put forward a policy especially for the rich it negatively impacts the poor and uh, when we uh, on the other hand when government br brings a policy for the poor it negatively impacts the rich this is a small example so as the society has become more and more complex government has to give importance and consideration for each and every sector each and every se uh, section of the society so this as the complexities of modern life increases uh, the government also has to increase the uh, public expenditure uh, the last one the last reason is the role of public sector public sector also plays a big role uh, when more and more com uh, when more and more sectors are influenced by the government government also has to increase the expenditure in that sectors public sectors too uh, this theory is also widely criticized because the main reason is that Wagner's hypothesis was widely criticized by noted economists such as Alan Peacock and Jake Wiseman. What was the reason for their criticism? They said that it lacks a comprehensive analytical framework. It's just a theory, there isn't any analytical framework for this theory. So that's the main criticism put forward by Peacock and Wiseman and they also have put forward their own theory uh, Wiseman Peacock hypothesis which we will be discussing in the next video so I think that uh, the topics that, that we discussed is clear to you you can share your doubts to my email or my whatsapp number or you can comment your doubts I will be reaching to you thank you I hope that everything is clear uh, I would like to suggest you to share my video to your friends like uh, sh uh, like and share the video and subscribe my channel thank you see you in the next video